This video was brought to you by Magic Spoon. You know what was awesome? Being a kid and wolfing down colorful cereal without a care in the world for how much sugar I was consuming. Those days were great, but you know what's also great? Magic Spoon cereal. It lets me relive those precious times. It's colorful, the box is colorful, it's got games and stuff on the back, just like the good old days. Best part is though, it tastes great and it has zero grams of sugar, four to five net grams of carbs, and a whopping 13 to 14 grams of protein per serving. It's gluten-free, in fact, totally grain-free, and has no artificial colors or sweeteners. I love all four flavors, fruity, frosted, cocoa, and and peanut butter. And if you want to try out a variety pack, hit the link down in the description. Use the code Arlo or simply head to magicspoon.com slash Arlo and you will get $5 off your order. Every purchase comes with a 100% happiness guarantee, so you got nothing to lose. Thanks again to Magic Spoon. Now on with the video. Okay, if I had to choose a favorite flavor, I'd say frosted. Fruity. For, yeah, frosted. Maybe peanut butter. <laughs> what? My friends, we finally have it. We have it, and by it, I mean Tears of the Kingdom's thing. <laughs> the thing, you know, the thing. I'm actually mad. I'm a little bit mad here, because I had an idea for a video, been looking at the marketing, and it's been really weird, and we all know it's been weird, and they've been really secretive about it, and it's been gotten even weirder, and I've said like, I'm okay with it, because I like surprises, I don't mind they didn't want to reveal a lot, but it was still getting weird, you know, on Twitter, they just kept showing us, like, Breath of the Wild stuff. Like, they're advertising their game by showing us the previous game, and it was getting weird. And I really wanted to do a video about that, specifically, but the, how, like, there's something they're not showing us, you know? It's either this game is going to be really disappointing and there's nothing to show, and that's why they're not showing it, <laughs> or there is some large element of the game that we still don't know yet. That seemed more likely, and it was just something really dramatically big. For, to give us some kind of reason why they would be so weird and stingy about footage. And I wanted to do a video about that, but then I got sick. I know I get sick a lot. Why do you always get sick, Arlo? It's a whole bunch of stuff not worth going into, but I had a throat infection and then it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> the point is I got sick and I couldn't do the video. And then I was like, this is the week. This is the week I'm gonna do it. Monday, boom, nope, sorry. This is happening. They're revealing it and they did it too late. Oh well though, because the point is, we have it. We finally have the thing. I don't know why they've been so secretive about this. I really don't know why. The last trailer we got at the last direct, that should have just been it. I mean like maybe they really wanted to reveal it in a gameplay reveal and not a trailer so that we would better understand it. Then they should have given us this before the direct. <laughs> so they give us a big, I don't know, it's just, it's weird. I don't know why they waited until now, so close to release, to tell us what the selling point is. The reason you want to get this game instead of just playing the previous game. Why they wait this long, I do not know. I do not know. No idea. But at least now we finally have it. I really was not sure I wanted to watch this thing. I really, I, had to, I argued with myself a whole lot in the end, I thought, okay, I mean, like, you know, I, people told me it's not like, you know, it's not a big story thing or whatever. Everyone's going to be talking about it. I'm not going to be able to avoid it. It's not like a detail that I can go in. I'm not going to not be on Twitter. It, this is my job. So I watched it. You can stick stuff together. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing is you can stick stuff together now. That's it. it really boils down to that. You can take objects and stick them together. But... It's one of those ideas, you know, and like, if it was gonna be a big thing, they were gonna sell the sequel on, it, it was gonna have to really sell it. But I'd say that this, even though it's sort of simple on the surface, yeah, the you can see the potential there. Breath of the Wild is already such a, just a systemic game. You know, it's all about physics and, and things working together and all these mechanics. And so, like, with, with those tools, there's so much that you can do in terms of 
you know, combat or creativity, just messing around or whatever. And this is adding another element, another facet, another, another dimension to it <laughs> that is going to just dramatically multiply what can be done in this game versus the previous game. And I would say that's definitely enough to hinge a sequel on because it's it's so much. So, okay, let's talk about it. So, uh, you know, the first uh, the first example was like, you have a stick and you put a rock on the stick. And like, there you go. So you're gonna be able to use it to create a variety of different weapons, just weapons of different types. Uh, you know, later in the thing, he's fighting a construct creature, artifact creature construct, <laughs> colorless. And it's got a weapon that's like a fan that blows you away, you know? And he's got, oh, a puff shroom on a shield and it creates a smoke screen. So like clearly this is using a lot of the objects that we already had access to in the first game, but then adding a lot more in. Um, I I mean like, you probably don't even need me to tell you, but like you, it cannot be overstated how big, <laughs> how big of a thing this is. And not just for like, like vehicles, because we saw that in the trailer. You know, we saw him like riding on these things that they look very similar to the kinds of uh, machines, vehicles that people just barely managed to cobble together using Breath of the Wild's various physics and things. They got it working, and that's obviously like the inspiration for this. You know, the ways that people join things together, and then of course like octo balloons or whatever the octorock balloons, like that. They were able to attach. And that added so much, and that clearly got their imaginations going, being like, what if anything could attach? We already have this physics-based systemic game, so it makes all the sense in the world. It's one of those, that's Nintendo. I hate them for it. They're so clever. I, you know, <laughs> it's just these little ideas I wish I could come up with. It was right there all along. It was perfect. It is the perfect, just the perfect iteration on Breath of the Wild and what it established. It just continues that so well. So much room for creativity and all that stuff. So yeah, so like there's the vehicle element. You know, the thing where you, you're making a raft to cross a river and you got fans and things with like battery power. Um, you know, that's gonna be a big thing. I'm sure I'm gonna spend hours making these crafts that then just like topple over right before I get to the top of the mountain. <laughs> just dramatically break and kill me. And I can't wait for that. I really can't wait for that. Um, but then of course in combat, like, no, I mean like, you just picked up a spear and put it on the end of a stick. Now he's got like a mega long thing. I don't know like what the limits are <laughs> when you're making a weapon. Is there a limit to how many things you could put together? Um, wow, who knows? Uh, but there's so much you can do with that. And uh, one very super ultra, mega champion, no way, exciting thing, attaching a keys eyeball to an arrow, turning it into a homing arrow. So like, that's cool. That already seems like pretty overpowered. Yeah, people are gonna be like farming keys like crazy just to get their precious eyeballs. I feel sorry for keys. Um, but like, no, the fact that you can attach many different things to your arrows, that's essentially a way of crafting arrows. And that was something that was weirdly, weirdly missing. I mean, I've gone on about this, did a big old review about it. Crafting is something that was weirdly missing in the first game. It felt like it was supposed to be there. They give us all of these enemy parts and raw materials that look like, yeah, like why can't I make a fire arrow out of like a ruby, which is like, has fire magic in it and like a flint or something with my air. You just couldn't. Um, but now you basically can, at least with arrows. We still don't know about uh, about weapons. Uh, at least with arrows, you can craft different stuff, like attach it to the arrows, basically crafting your own arrows. So that's great. That gives us a thing to do with at least some amount of uh, materials that we gather. So that's great. Just want stuff to do with the materials. Why did you include the materials if we can't do more stuff with it? But it's giving me hope for the idea of crafting weapons or at least, you know, this game's version of crafting. You're not going into a menu and hitting craft with these ingredients, these materials. It's more like you're just sticking stuff together, but that's good because it's intuitive. It's like their cooking system in the first game. You know, you don't go into a menu and select your ingredients. You literally just pick them all up. You put them in your arms, you dump them in a pot. 
And so, yeah, like, this is perfect. And this is giving me hope for the idea of doing more. Because they were, he was even saying, like, oh, yeah, in the first game, you mostly just get better and better weapons by just picking them up from enemies that you kill. But in this one, you can make them. And it shows you only making them out of things like in your environment, you know, like a stick and a rock or a stick and a, and a dropped spear or a weird fan thing. Um, but like, easily, it sounds like you can probably use other things too. At the same time, if you don't have like a deeper crafting system, if you're just sticking stuff together, I can't just take a sword and stick a ruby onto it and have a fire sword. Maybe you can, maybe if you stick in the right spot. I don't know. Point is though, <laughs> I have high hopes for it because the weapon system, it was a problem. I mean, it was just kind of, it was a little underwhelming to just kind of like, I don't know, they just start dropping better stuff. And so that's how you get stronger is enemies just drop better stuff. It's like, that's, that's lame. I don't know. I, I read like, but this is like, no, you, you collect better materials and you stick them together and you get better stuff like that. We don't know how it's going to go. Uh, clearly weapon durability is still going to be a thing. I know that is a very big sore spot for a lot of people. Um, but I am going to be so much more okay with it. Like I, I, I better understand not being okay with it in the first game. But if there is a crafting element and the whole thing is like gathering materials to make things like I, I totally get why durability would, would be a part of that. You know, like you're, you're spending resources to make a thing, but you don't get to just keep that thing forever. It's, it's all about spending resources and that keeps you moving, keeps you gathering and collecting and killing monsters for their parts and stuff. As long as you're using those parts, you're not just amassing them in your inventory and then, oh yeah, that cool sword you picked up, it's going to break. I feel like it is such a better marrying of the concepts of it's like, yeah, of course. I mean, like with any survival game or anything, it's just like, yeah, I use these things to make this thing, but then like, it's gonna run out. I'm not gonna just keep it forever. Then I, I would craft a couple times and then I'm done crafting forever. Cause I just have the best stuff that I crafted. You know, I mean, I know there's plenty of games that have crafting and don't have durability. This is a way deeper discussion than we can do right now. But durability is definitely here to stay, and I can I can see it. I can get it. This whole this whole thing it just makes a lot of sense, and I'm really really excited. I it's it's another game though. We're we're getting into like Minecraft territory, where you've got so many options that I'm overwhelmed by them, and I'm like, yeah, I wish I were younger. I wish I was still a teenager, and I had all the time in the world and the attention to just give to this and play with it forever. I, I don't know, once it gets too deep and too creative, like, like I can play a game for a long time with like a lot of objectives, you know, the first game, you just run around. But if it's like make, using your brain power to use these deep mechanics and just like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try a little bit and the thing that I make is gonna look stupid. And then I'm just gonna be like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> so I don't actually know where I am. I'm sure to a degree, especially when it comes to, uh, making weapons. I am going to want to engage with it, but man, it's, it's just like, it's a lot. It is a lot, you know, like uh, really experimenting in a lot of super weird ways in the first game. That was a little bit beyond me. This is like, is this going to be really beyond me? I don't know. It's exciting though. It's very exciting. That, that, like I said, that's just, it's just such a big thing. <laughs> it's simple little thing. Stick stuff together. That really is gonna make for a very special sequel. This is not, like, that one thing alone is like, no, this is not just Breath of the Wild 1.5. This is adding a whole other layer that is just gonna affect the world itself. I mean, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on that. We got other stuff from this little gameplay thing, though. I was happy to see that, like, basically nothing looked familiar, you know? Like, anytime you're on a, on a sky island, like, those are all totally new, so that's fun. Um, but then just like even down on the surface, just like everything looks very different. If it's, it's using the same map, but it's very, very different. The whole like whole topography or whatever is just like, it's so, it's just very different. I'm, I'm, I'm less worried than ever about the reused map thing, you know? And if they alter it dramatically enough, then I can appreciate that it's using the old map. It doesn't just feel cheap. It feels like, oh, but like, I can see where it came from, but this totally is a new spin on it. Um, but yeah, as always, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. We got to look at a new creature construct. That is really cool. Um, you know, enemy variety was a bit lacking in the first game. And uh, the cool thing about a construct 
is that it could be anything. Uh, that it just like you look at that, you're like, oh, it's called a construct. They're probably gonna come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. So like that's cool. There's like no limit to. I mean, I don't want to get my hopes up. Maybe there's like three of them, but <laughs> but it could be a lot more. And then the fact that the enemies can have fused weapons too. That means that that enemy is, yeah, like giving one a fan. Like that means that enemy is effectively different or if one has like a way bigger reach because it has a super long spear, even just based on the stuff that he showed us in this little gameplay thing, like even just there, that's a lot of extra options for these enemies to have. So, you know, uh, uh, a moblin with a weird thing it put together that's gonna be very different to fight than a moblin with just a spear. So that's another really exciting element to really just, oh my gosh, just so much for just the the variety. So that's, and I also just love weird magic robot stuff. I love it, Zelda whenever it gets like futury, but it's always like past because the tech stuff was always in the past for some reason, but I love it when it does it. I love the look of it. I love the weird tech stuff. Um, what else? Uh, we saw some new abilities. We we saw the rewind ability, but we were able to glean that from the trailers that, yeah, you, you pointed a thing and you rewind it and it, go, it just goes backwards. So you can use a falling rock to ride it back up to, like we've seen that. Um, it is very cool. That is gonna add a lot to just the game. I don't know if we're having it on top of all of the old runes or what, um, but that's cool. Then we saw the, uh, the it was it the ascend? ability where if you have a, a ceiling over you, you can just like shoot up and just like, I, I don't, you could just go through the ceiling. It's weird. It's weird. It's not something I would have thought of. I, it's, it seems a little unnecessary, but I suppose, I don't know, maybe it'll open up more stuff that I'm not thinking of. Or maybe they were like, people don't need to climb that much. They spent a lot of the first game climbing. Let's just give them a quick way to just go up as long as there's a ceiling, I guess. It probably like puzzling elements in like dungeons, if there are dungeons. But yeah, I'm like, I'm a little iffy on it. I like climbing. I thought that was some of the, some of the most fun in the first game was just like, can I get up there? Um, but now it's like, oh, there's a cave. I can just shoot to the top. It's weird. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you just like start out at the beginning having it or what, but I'm a little torn on it, but eh, it's fine, I guess. And that's basically it. I know there were other little odds and ends and details in the trailer, you know, like, oh, who's that? Who's that talking over there? Like, what's, is that a different building? Like, differences, I'm sure people will be, uh, you know, even just what we saw here, picking it apart, all the little details. I'm not going that far, especially because, like, I didn't even want to watch this video. I would go in pretty blind. You know, if it's a sequel that's very similar to the original, any teeny tiny little change or surprise I would love to, uh, you know, just experience as I play the game. Just take anything that I can get. Um, but yeah, I did watch this. I'm glad I did. Everyone's going to be talking about it. It's the thing. It's the big thing for this game. And now that it's out in the open, for whatever reason they took this long, now that it's out in the open, I'm expecting a new trailer. I Probably not even in like a Nintendo Direct. Probably just like a... Just a new trailer coming soon and now it'll, there, now you know the thing. Look, all these weird contraptions and fusing weapons and stuff, probably. I would hope that they would start marketing the game a little more heavily, a little bit more traditionally going forward. Just, I don't know, it just felt weird. Marketing, it's, it's, it's one of those things where like, it's not strictly needed, but you kind of do it to maintain a, sense of normalcy, you know, they know the game's gonna sell no matter what, but you gotta advertise it to a, the broader market. You, it's one of those things you just kinda have to do, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, and they revealed the, the Switch OLED, the special one. Uh, I know a lot of people were really waiting for that. So uh, there you go. I'm not the kind of person who buys a fancy, it's gotta have new features. If it's just one that looks cool, I'm just, I'm not, I don't know. Too lazy, not interested enough, too much money. Eh, but there you go. It looks really cool, though. It's really cool looking. The Joy-Cons look really neat. Um, so that's cool. So that's that. We have it. I feel like I just... Uh, just a sigh of relief. Just this tension over the last, like, four years of, like, what is the sequel to Breath of the Wild? What does it look like? Why are they being so secretive? There it is. There it is. There could still be more. There could, I get the feeling there might still be more like story elements that they didn't want to spoil. And that's another reason why they haven't shown off a lot. 
maybe. They've been very vague about that. There's a mummy Ganon. There's a hand. And every time anyone does anything, it's just like a hand. Mummy get hand. Zelda falling. It's just like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a little bit more to it than that. But we'll see. Thank you for watching. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's the end of the video. Bye. See you later.